guess how much I know about sport? That's right, absolutely nothing. And American baseball, possibly less than nothing. This podcast is called Why Dance Matters, so I usually get away with it. But tell me that there's a baseball team in Georgia where players break off to twerk or do a TikTok dance challenge, or where the director of entertainment is a trained classical dancer, or where everyone dresses as a banana. And gentlemen, you have my attention. I'm David Jays, and this is Why Dance Matters, the Royal Academy of Dance podcast. We love to see dance sneaking into places it has no business to be, like American baseball, which you'd think might be a stranger to dance breaks and pirouettes. Think again. We're about to meet Zach Frongillo. Zach He did musicals in high school, he did ballet in college, he's performed in South Korea, and he's the entertainment director of the Savannah Bananas. Alongside traditional baseball games, they created a more fun style of event, with costumes and stunts and social media silliness and all the food you can eat and dance stuff. They're cheerleaders, are cute kids or even cuter senior citizens. The players shake their booty, the umpires pop and lock, and Zach himself takes to the field for a crafty jeté. Is it sport? Is it entertainment? What do fans make of it? We need to know. My biggest problem will be my accent, which really doesn't want to rhyme Savannah with banana, and so will ruin the team's name every time I'm so sorry. And now, as we jocks like to say, let's play ball. Zach. Welcome to Why Dance Matters. Thank you guys so much for having me. You were in school, huge sports fan, hockey Mm -hmm. and and baseball, but you were also a great dancer. Did you, when you were growing up, imagine that there might be a job that would combine these two passions? I mean, I think it's, it would be a lie to say that I did. Growing up, I was a sports kid. So baseball, hockey, football, the whole nine on the, on the uh, sports side. And I really didn't start dancing until high school. I just kind of fell in love with dance and performance and the ability to portray emotion in a new light. I've seen high school movies and I know that the jocks and the theatre kids are like two tribes who never meet enemies since the beginning of time, but you presumably were straddling both of those camps. How did you do that? Were there two Zacks who would kind of switch during uh, (laughs) high school? I think I can speak for everybody. And there was definitely comments that were made when I was a good baseball player. I, I I was very good of my class. I always played at a high level. And a lot of people had always just seen me as the baseball player. That caused a lot of issues when my baseball career kind of took a backseat to dance for a lot of people because that's just not normal. And people (laughs) don't truly expect the star baseball player to be starring in a musical the next week, you know? Yeah. And there were definitely some comments. But one thing I was always very clear on was that it's always going to be me. Like, no matter what, it's it's me. I'm myself and I'm doing this because I love it. And Mm. that was the most important part of the whole thing. I'm never going to be the guy that's, you know, one guy to one group of people and another guy to another group of people. No, I want to be as authentic as I possibly can be. And that created a lot of great relationships. But I will say it also burnt a lot of bridges. I would stand up for the people that I was with on the theater side or vice versa when even sometimes the theater kids would say some bad things about some of my teammates. And it's standing up for those people and being like, you know what? No, that's that's not okay. You know, they're, they're doing what makes them happy. So allow them to be happy. And I prided myself on that a lot because I think it's really important that we as people just continue to love and see our differences as people, but love each other because of our differences. I was one of those weird people that got to see both sides of the spectrum and, and, and both sides of those two groups of people. 
what we were able to do is kind of create a nice little relationship between each other by the end of it. And not everything is high school musical, but it was pretty cool <laughs> to see some of my good friends in the theater world make great friends with people on the baseball field and, and on the soccer field. You know, we, uh, as a theater group, we went to like every sporting event my senior year oh, wow. because we wanted to show support. And in return, it was really cool when we're up on stage and we have the entire football team in the first three rows just going nuts for us. You know, <laughs> we created that over time just because of, and I don't want to say it's just me, but it was a lot of just people coming together and being like, you know what, life's too short to really hate each other for our differences. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's pretty cool that some of those football players got to see the value in, in musical theater. And I think I created some fans of some, uh, some sporting events from the theater side. <laughs> and how did dance get its hooks into you? What was it yeah. that was the appeal for you? It actually started with uh, just a regular play. We did The Miracle Worker. It was an off-season time. And my sisters were like, why don't you audition for something? You look like a couch potato. Like, go do something. With <laughs> and, you know, you know me, I'm like doing three different sports at the same time, but they don't <laughs> see that at, at the time being. So, you know, I auditioned for Miracle Worker and I was lucky enough to get one of the parts in that. The people were great. And so that's what kept me coming back. Mm -hmm. And then the next show was Anything Goes. And if you're a dancer, you know, you can't just pick up tap at the <laughs> drop of a hat. So I started taking prep classes with at Extreme Dance Force, which is where Rochelle Nemec was. And she did the audition prep classes for Anything Goes because she was the choreographer. And so at first, there's like 25 people in that class. Then Anything Goes gets casted and we start doing the show and people realize, all right, I don't need to do this anymore because I already have all my choreography done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't need to be taking the classes anymore. And so we saw a class of 25 drop to about six within two weeks. And then the show really ended and we go on summer break and now it's a class of one and it's just me. <laughs> and it was just because I loved it so much. Like I loved making noise on my feet. I love tap. I love rhythm. I loved dancing to different styles of music and feeling classy and like all this this stuff that comes with tap dancing. Obviously, she doesn't want to do a class for one person. So she was <laughs> like, I, I'm not going to do that anymore. Why don't you just come take with our company kids? And so I started to go into the tap company classes that were on Saturday mornings and fell in love with the people again. So I fell in love with the people in theater. Then I fell in love with the people in dance. <laughs> and then from there, we're just on a fast track from there. And they convinced me to start competing and, and doing solos and duos and trios and the whole nine yards because oh, wow. dance and, and men are scarce. So, <laughs> you know, I, I really loved it. I just fell in love with that. From there, it just took off. And then I fall in love with ballet. And then, <laughs> you know, I get an offer from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And I'm in this world of like, how in the world did I go from baseball, hockey and football and, and all this to dance like where, yeah. where did that come from but it was all love and and just passion finding new things and finding that niche that uh that not a lot of people have and then i got back from seoul south korea when i was in korea for about six months i really was at a high with dance and i thought yes like this is absolutely <laughs> it and then i get that notification that the vegas golden knights are having auditions for ice crew and performers and I was like, I have to be involved. Like I get to have this ability to perform and be in sports at the same time. I mean, <laughs> you can't really script a better, better spot. <laughs> then I fall in love with sports entertainment and the behind the scenes. And then the next thing I know, I have a, a message from a man in a yellow tux saying, Hey, <laughs> this little team down here in Savannah, Georgia might be a good fit for you. And, uh, he was not wrong to say the least. And now I have the dance world. I have my performance background, the sports world, all combined into one and I I think I kind of curated something pretty special here to say the least for people who don't know what the job of entertainment director might involve I mean is it head of fun at <laughs> at the Savannah Bananas Kinda, yeah. I, I think that's the old job title that they used to use was director of fun. Uh, uh. Back in uh, when Jesse and Emily were in Gastonia, that was one of the positions. But basically, yeah, my job is to make the show run from the second you get out of your car to the second you leave at night. My job is to make sure that you have the best experience possible. I uh, script out all the entire game from that 4.45 when you're getting out of your car all the way until <laughs> 10 o'clock at night. 
mid-game promotions, all of the moments that you see during the game, the crazy dancing, the crazy <laughs> antics. I'm a part of the scripting and writing of all of that, including all the idea creation on those moments. And then my job is basically just to execute. So take these ideas, put them into a script, and then figure out the ways to execute them. Rehearsals, run dances, the whole nine yards. But that's my job. I've been looking at videos online and I've seen players in tutus. I've seen players lined up doing the can-can. I've seen umpires dancing. I've seen you, of course, giving it the full pirouette. It's not what a lot of us would expect from a sports game. Can you talk us through what a typical game with the bananas might be? First and foremost, you're going to you're going to experience pretty much every emotion that you can in a in a two and a half hour span, to say the least. <laughs> a bananas game is the most entertaining sporting event you'll ever go to in your life. And I believe that fully from the second you walk through the, the doors at Grayson Stadium here in Savannah or any of the shows on the road that we've done. There's a certain energy there. I haven't seen it replicated anywhere else you know you're in for a show. So it's kind of combining the idea of walking into your favorite artists or your favorite singers concert and your favorite sports team game all into one feeling. It, it, it has that vibe to it. You're going to expect to see people dancing. You're going to sing loud. You're going to make a lot of noise. <laughs> you're going to have moments in the game where you just stop and freeze for a second. You're going to see things that you've never seen on a baseball field before. And that's what we try to deliver. Every single game, we want our fans leaving thinking that they just saw something that they never saw on a baseball field before and never thought they would. Is it the vibe of a sporting event or is it an entertainment event first? So our motto is, and this is what we live by, is fans first, entertain always. So right. the sport comes first when it comes to the game itself. But at the end of the day, where I come in and where our staff comes in, it's always gets back to the fans. You know, our fans are first. So what that means is, you know, a ticket is $20 and it's all you can eat hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken sandwiches, the whole, the whole platter is all you can eat, all inclusive. That also includes sodas, waters, the whole nine. We want a family of four to be able to come into our ballpark and truly feel like they matter and they don't have to spend a million dollars just to go see a game. They can come out, have a great time as a family, have dinner, have some fun, and watch a baseball game all at the same time while also having the, the time of their lives. That's what comes first. It's not right. the game. It's not the entertainment. It's the fans. So that fans first mentality is what drives us. And it's something we ask ourselves every single day. Any decision we make, is it fans first? Is it the best for our fans? And then the second half of that is entertain always. So <laughs> we believe there's a, a true correlation between the entertainment and the baseball. So there's not a world where those two are separate. The entertainment is part of the baseball and the baseball is part of the entertainment. And when you say you devise the whole experience from the moment people arrive to the second they leave, is each of those a one-off? Is it like creating a whole Broadway show for just one day? Yeah. I like to phrase this like this. Every time you've gone to a Broadway show, there's, there's not much of a pre-show if that makes sense. So, yeah. you know, you go in, you scan your ticket, you get your popcorn, you get your glass of wine and you go sit down and, and you wait for that opening announcement of, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Please turn off your cell phones, no flash photography, the whole nine yards, right? Everybody's heard it, everybody's seen it. For us, that's our main stage. So from, like I said, the second you walk out of your car, who's greeting you? We have parking penguins out in the uh, parking lot handing out icy pops. <laughs> with hands you have parking in. penguins. Oh parking penguins. Lord. They'll dance to the wobble and they'll say the waddle is what they call it. Uh, but And then we have our pregame march where before the doors even open, you've met the entire cast. Our Bananas Pet Band is coming through, playing music. All of our cast are Banana Nanas, Mananas, Banana Splits split our dancing first base coach <laughs> and our entire players are all out there greeting fans giving high fives literally parting the lie down the middle giving high fives to both sides and we do a full performance before the gates even open and then wow. when the gates open all craziness breaks loose you know we have <laughs> pretty on the crowd we have flying bananas we have a tryout to become the next dad bod cheerleading squad member a part of the mananas 
We do a full warm up that's based off of hockey. Or we imitate the Lion King. And this is all before the game even starts, right? <laughs> and so when you walk in the door, you're entertained. That's what's important. And so instead of, you know, going to a baseball game, you get your hot dog and get your soda and then you go sit down and you wait for the game to start. We want you as you get that hot dog and you get your chicken sandwich and you get your soda and you sit down, you're still able to have a blast while you're just sitting there waiting for the game to start. Our pregame script is longer than most MLB teams regular script for the entire game. We pride ourselves on that. It's very, very important to us. Presumably, you're just lying in bed at night and then suddenly waking up with the next ridiculous idea to put into a game. Are you kind of sitting up, bold upright at midnight going, hold on, dancing bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, Jesse and I, uh, Jesse, the owner, and I, last year we dedicated every day and we did 10 new ideas wow. for our show. Every day, 10 ideas. And right. those ranged from, you know, minuting promotions that involved props to good hitter walk-up music. Um, over the top moments in the crowd and all these different ideas. Nine times out of 10, there's like one or two good ideas in there, or maybe Jesse had a good idea and I had a good idea. We combined the two and made it a great idea, but <laughs> ideas drive us. Ideas are what keep us going. And I will absolutely say there have been times where it's the middle of the night and I wake up and I have to write something down because I'm like, this is too good of an idea to pass up. <laughs> and then I wake up in the morning and I read my idea and I'm like, I don't even know where the heck I was going with that. So, <laughs> you know, it happens that way or sometimes it's a great idea. The great part about our office and, and our creative office and what we call the circle of life with our creative office, we all sit in one room with no barriers, no doors, no anything like that, because mm -hmm. at any given moment, creativity could spark mm -hmm. and we have the ability to really take ideas from each other and bounce them off just to make our show better or find new ways. And that's very, very important to us. Dance has been a big part of this from the beginning, hasn't it? Was that just because it was already in your background? Or was that something that Jesse, the owner, and that the team wanted to bring to the experience? It was definitely before my time, and it was actually before the Bananas even. Jesse, when he was the GM back in Gastonia, he had the idea of making, you know, the baseball more fun. And mm -hmm. that included dancing players. And it wasn't as choreographed as it is now. Maybe it was just the YMCA, or maybe it was something small, like a short little 30-second clip. But no matter what, there were dancing players. And when he came to Savannah, that was something that was very important that he continued to add. And then we had the addition of our dancing first base coach, Maceo. He kind of took us to the next level and making these dances longer, more exciting, and really making these baseball players look like classically trained dancers, which is really, really impressive to say the least. But right. So what we've done, and since my time of being here, is we've just, what we call plus it, we've just made it better and made it new and, and exciting. And we don't repeat dances unless it's like, unless we really want to do something again. It's always new dances, new music, new moves, and it keeps our fans engaged. And you can imagine the second that people that have never been to a game before start seeing dancing players, their phones <laughs> shoot up so fast just to record what's going on. And they share it to their friends and their friends are like, what in the world are you doing? And they're like, you have to go to a Savannah Bananas game. And, and that's what we like to see. And does this mean that the players spend as much time in dance class as they do in training for the game? I wouldn't say it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but there is a full rehearsal block, which is funny. Our daily schedule, the guys usually show up right around two o'clock. They go into a baseball meeting right at about 2.15. At 2.20, I take over for an entertainment meeting where I go over everything that they're <laughs> going to be doing for the entire night, give props where props is due to people that crushed it the last game or whatever that may be. And then we go onto the field right around 2.30 and from 2.30 to 3.15, we're in rehearsals. So that's dance rehearsals, that's running different elements that we're going to be running throughout the game. We just really want to make sure that we're crisp and clean and make sure that everything is good for the game later. And then right after we're done at that rehearsal block, they go into batting practice. And then right after batting practice, the doors are opening and they're getting ready to go out for the march. So we do spend just as much time on a game day with the entertainment stuff. But however, on their off days, they're usually practicing baseball, not necessarily they're dancing. <laughs> however, every once in a while, you'll see them practicing on the field for one of their dances they have coming up for the weekend. 
Oh, nice. And when so when you're recruiting, presumably you're looking for people who are going to be fully committed to the whole experience. Someone who says, I'm just interested in the sport. I don't want to do the rest. It would be in the wrong place. Yeah, correct. Tyler Gillel, our head coach, he did a great job of recruiting players when we were in the collegiate league of, you know, what we're looking for is we call it our kind of guy. So mm-hmm. a guy that's not only going to be great on the baseball field, but be very good on the entertainment side. And what we call that is flip the switch. So being able to flip the switch between entertainment to baseball, back to entertainment, back to baseball, at just the flip of a switch. And that definitely goes into recruitment of players. You know, we have for our professional team, which is what we're doing full time now for Banana Ball, we have a full tryout, but that tryout is unlike any other baseball tryout. You know, baseball is maybe a quarter of that entire tryout. We have a TikTok station, we have a dance station, <laughs> we have trick catches, trick pitches, entertainment right. value stuff. In that tryout, it's like a half audition, half tryout, which is just crazy. But that's what we're looking for. We're looking for an, our kind of guy, a guy that's going to be great on the entertainment side and also great on the baseball side. And if you're you're just one of those two, you know, if you're only a entertainer and not a great baseball player, maybe the bananas aren't the best fit for you or vice versa. You're just a great baseball player and you really don't care about the fans and you just want to play the game. Sorry, you're not going to fit in here in Banana Land. It's just <laughs> not because you're a bad person or you're a bad baseball player, but it's just not what we need and what we're looking for. We're right. looking for that guy that can go out there and shove on the mound and throw four shutout innings and then directly after that go into the crowd and sign an autograph for a little kid. Michael Deed, he's one of our uh, professional players. He had, by the end of the tour, this last tour, we went to seven cities, he had autographs all on his jersey because every time he would sign a hat, he would say, I'll sign your hat if you sign my jersey. <laughs> that's what we look for. That's right. an our kind of guy. And so by the end of the tour, you know, he's, it, it, the yellow jersey is basically black now just from old Sharpie marks. <laughs> but it's really special when you have that buy-in from the players and we get an our kind of guy because they, they take it to the next level and they understand what we're trying to do here. Is there a natural crossover between athletes and dancers? Are the skills that work for one group transferable to the other or or are they different bits of your brain different sorts of attitude that you need no there's absolutely crossover for sure absolutely crossover dancers have some of the most intricate footwork on the planet and uh so do athletes you know baseball players and and football players and hockey players they're always trying to get that extra step or that extra inch is is what i've heard a lot of yeah and that's the same in dance and it's just precision and um there is a lot of crossover however there is on the dance side the artistic side of it where you're trying to be as athletic as you can be while also being beautiful on stage when on the baseball field you're trying to be the best that you can be but maybe it's on the gritty side so it might not look pretty but if you get the job done, it's obviously is all that matters. There is a big crossover there. And that's kind of what has helped me in my career here in, in Banana Land of <laughs> teaching these guys how to dance. It's like they don't understand the steps. So I can't say Tom Bay, Pottery Ray, Lisa, Jete. Like I can't say that to them because they'll never get it. Sure. But what I can say is, you know, pretend you're leading off a of first base. You take off to steal and then a ground ball gets hit at you. There's a ground ball hits a second base and you have to jump over the ball. And so then they understand, they're like, I put it into their concept and their, right. their great power. And they're like, all right, shuffle, step, step, jump. And it's like, oh, wow, that's exactly what I just told you to do. But it's in baseball. <laughs> and so there is a little bit of that crossover. We're doing a lot of the same moves just for different purpose. Right. And is it partly then kind of creating a story that the players can go with? A sort of a little mini narrative in their heads so that all these moves add up and make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think... Baseball players are very routine based. And so anytime that you can add some sort of routine into their into their brain, it makes a lot more sense, which helps them with retaining choreography, which is wild. It's just they get into a routine and they're like, OK, I do this step and then I do this step and I do this step when on the dancer side, it kind of just becomes muscle memory and you don't really think about it. You just kind of do it. But their routine is is what drives them and what helps them. For you, was there a moment when you realized that you weren't going back to a career in dance? I mean, you mentioned getting the call to work in sports entertainment. 
did you think that was that forever or were you thinking of it as a sort of an interlude before you yeah, got no, back on the dance track? I, yeah, I, I absolutely thought there was a finale to my dance career. You know, mm -hmm. UNLV was one of the most special experiences of my life. I can't thank them enough, you know, the, the dance department at UNLV for, for the opportunities that they gave to me personally and to some of my other classmates. But UNLV gave me the opportunity to travel the world with dance, which is something I never, ever anticipated being able to do. Um, yeah. You know, traveling to Turks and Caicos, living in South Korea, all over Europe, and then, you know, also having, giving me the opportunity to work a job in dance with a dance competition, producing and teaching dance to, to kids all across the country. You know, I've been to 49 out of 50 states. I'm 25 years old. And that's pretty rare. And UNLV gave me that opportunity. Once I got back from, from Korea and, you know, started joining the Vegas Golden Knights, I did see an end in dance. You know, I was still dancing throughout the, the entire time that I was with the Knights, but it always became secondary to the sports side and the sports entertainment side. And then once I came to Savannah, that was basically my retirement party for, <laughs> for dance. I right. knew that there were dancing players here and stuff like that. And I knew my dance life would, would help, but my performance, taking classes or anything along the dance line for myself was done. I was very okay with that. I had done everything that I could ever imagine and more in my dance career. Right. And I was very, very happy to say goodbye. But I learned pretty quickly once I got here that once you have it in you, the dancer in you, it's impossible to take it out. I would catch myself going to, I'm a big country line dance fan. So I'd go to country bars and go line dancing and two-stepping and in the whole nine yards. And, and I would be like, man, I miss going to dance class. Like I miss taking <laughs> ballet class and, and feeling strong and beautiful on stage at the same time. And then uh, what, what got me back was I ended up becoming a ballet first base coach. You know, Jesse knew that I had that ballet background. He'd done his research and he knew. <laughs> And one game, Maceo, who's our dancing first base coach, couldn't be at a game. Jesse came to me a couple of weeks in advance and, and we knew that this was coming up. And he was like, well, you, you have two options. Either you find a replacement for him for the weekend or you get out there and do ballet at first base. <laughs> and I was pretty determined. I'll, I'll say it. I was pretty determined to find someone to replace him. But uh, <laughs> finding male dancers that can break dance or, or do exactly what we want them to do was very difficult. So uh, I got into uniform. And it felt natural and I got out there on first base and the music started and I was doing a piece from Potacot, actually. We had just done that. I did it my senior year at UNLV and I just remembered the choreography. I did a rehearsal, obviously, and, and did it. And I just, I, I lost myself when I was out there at first base and, and found such a weird feeling of like, wow, I'm on stage, but I'm on a baseball field at the same time. Like, this is yeah. really, really cool. And with a huge audience watching you yeah. as well. Yeah, probably one of my largest audiences. It yeah. was dang close, to say the least. But after that, I was like, wow, this is something special. And then the power of social media took off. You know, that video <laughs> of me doing ballet changed my life. It, you know, it curated, I don't know how many views on social media. On, the, on, our, on our TikTok alone, somewhere around 2 million views but it got wow. shared endlessly on dance pages, and baseball pages, and all of this like weird crossover of worlds that I had back in high school, you know, which I was talking about earlier, but mm -hmm. it, it, it was special. And then I got a call from Savannah Ballet Theater here in, in Savannah, and they say, you know, we're looking for a guy to do a part in Sleepy Hollow. We would love to have you. <laughs> and I go, and I remember walking into the studio for the first time after saying yes, and just having that like first day of school jitters, kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm back dancing and I never thought this would happen. And then uh, yeah. Sleepy Hollow happens and then they bring me back from Nutcracker and lo and behold, back into the dance world <laughs> yet again. How, how easy was it to get back into condition for that? Because, you know, dancers always say, you know, if you take a day off class, then you it takes you a month to recover. If you take a year yeah. off class, then that's it. I think UNLV faculty will agree with me on this one. I'm kind of an anomaly when it comes to recovery. I was never the one that was like huge into taking class every day. You know, right. I could take class two or three times a week and be fine and, and not lose a step. And after it was about a year and a half from my last show due to COVID and everything like that, 
that I wasn't performing and I wasn't taking class. And so getting back into shape, I thought was going to be a lot harder than it actually was. You know, I'm an athletic person and I, I keep good care of myself. And, uh, you know, I was still stretching pretty often, even when I was going to the gym and, and all that kind of stuff. I really did think it was going to be a mess the first couple <laughs> rehearsals, but you know, I think it took me about two classes and I was back into, into good to go shape. The big thing was, was getting ready to do a full ballet production. That one took a little bit of a uh, endurance training to get back to, yeah. to show ready, but that came with rehearsals and, and, and class. So you've got loads going on. You've you've got your your social media career and your ballet career, and obviously being entertainment director for the team. How do you kind of balance all of those things? Which one is the priority? Um, for me, the priority is still here in Banana Land, mm -hmm. and that that's not going to change anytime soon. There's something very very special happening here in Savannah, Georgia. And I'm just very, very blessed to be a part of it, to say the least. And I can't thank Jesse and Emily for bringing me on and, and letting me be a part of this. But through everything, my passion is in sports entertainment and, you know, scripting and calling a show and providing smiles for thousands, thousands of people that are here and decide that they want to spend their evening with the Savannah Bananas. That's what drives me more than anything on the planet. And dance is a secondary for me now. And I still play baseball with friends. Like I have a, I have a baseball tournament in Arizona coming up next month where I'm going to go play with my friends from Vegas during the off season. But you know, those things kind of drive me. But at the end of the day, the passion is sports entertainment and our fans here in Savannah, you know, I can still take that inspiration from dance and from baseball and football and whatever it may be. I can still pull from that any day of the week, but I can't replace the feeling of walking through that line. Just, we had a line stretch almost a mile long to get into one of our games in Montgomery, Alabama. And walking through that line is something that I'll never forget. And just seeing the smiles on those kids' faces and watching our players buy in and get autographs from that little boy that just wanted to meet his favorite athlete and get an autograph and these guys are heroes to these kids when they come to a game here they're heroes and you never think like that you get to actually like have an interaction with someone like that and you'll see every once in a while a guy will go out and sign autographs for five minutes but then you never see him again yeah. you know with our guys they, they spend hours with our fans every game and giving them the opportunity to be that hero and be that celebrity and give our fans something to cheer for and excitement and let them escape from their own reality for a couple hours mm -hmm. and and really just sit down and have fun that's what warms my heart and and really gives me passion and and drives who i am as a person Zach, it has been very lovely to speak to you but we will let you go um, after we've asked this one last question, which is, why does dance matter to you? Dance matters to me for hundreds and hundreds of different reasons. But the one thing that I think needs to be said more than anything is that dance and baseball alike, they provide escape from reality. And whether you're on stage or you're in the audience, you know, what it does is it gives you this beautiful opportunity to escape from reality for a second. You know, life is hard. Life is really, really hard and it's not easy for a lot of people. And the one thing that I learned is that dance will always be there for you. Baseball will always be there for you. And that is something that is so incredibly special. You know, whether you're dancing in your living room or you're on stage, having that escape from reality for even if it's just a minute, to just release and, and, and feel something and be in your own body. There's nothing that can replace that. And for, for kids, it's remember that it's fun, you know, for, for kids that are out there dancing and boys and, and girls, like remember that this is supposed to be fun and find why it makes you so happy. And for the adult that retired and is no longer dancing and is working th their job, Dance is still there for you. 
and it'll never be gone completely. Like I said earlier, once once you start dancing and, and you fall in love with it, it'll never leave you. And so I think that's why dance matters so much. Just continue to dance and find your stage, whether that be in your living room or on a stage. Just continue to dance and enjoy it and, and have fun doing it because it'll always be there for you. Zach, it has been such a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Zach is so peppy. So much pep. It's a treat to speak to someone who clearly adores their job. And I don't think my fundamental ignorance of baseball showed at all. Whether you're a jock or a geek or a bright-eyed theatre kid, send us your thoughts. I'm at Mr. David Jays on Twitter. The RAD is at RAD headquarters. And you'll find links to the RAD and the Savannah Bananas, still can't pronounce it right, sorry about that, in our show notes. Our guest today was Zach Frongelo. Why Dance Matters is made by the RAD team of Celia Moran, Melanie Murphy and Charlie Strachan. And our artwork is by Bex Glendinning. And, fun fact, our producer, Sarah Miles, always dresses as a banana. Always. I'm David Jays. Take care and see you soon.